Little Nightmares is a great game. The atmospheric tension and suspense that accompanies running through the mysterious maw is nothing short of mastery for an indie title. I could say the exact same thing for the first two DLCs. But let me tell you something, this new DLC is so frustrating it almost killed my love for the game. Like seriously, I'm not kidding. There was cursing, there was anger, sanity breaks had to be taken, calming cheese had to be eaten. Yes, e eating cheese calms me, don't judge. It was that kind of rage-inducing gameplay. And before I go on a gnome induced tirade, yes, we are going to get into the new lore and information that was presented to us in this DLC. But I feel it's necessary to give some insight on the playability of the update before we jump into the lore, because they are connected in more ways than one. Oh, and as always with anything new that just came out that we also happen to cover, spoilers will be thrust asunder. I'm not entirely sure what thrust asunder means, but um, um that, that hit it. The gameplay for this DLC was nothing short of pure frustration. The controls for Little Nightmares have always been a bit wonky, but the puzzle solving and progression of the game has always been more or less linear, making it easy enough to stay on track. Meanwhile, the Hideaway DLC is over here deciding to go all emo and stubborn. I don't need to conform to your linear gameplay. That's what the man wants, fucking conformists. This update is the Black Swan of the Little Nightmare franchise. It's the South Park goth kid of the indie horror genre. Since since the game isn't linear this time, it was confusing as to whether or not you were in the right place doing the right thing. The puzzles were complicated in a way that isn't fun or challenging, but confusing. What makes a puzzle good and challenging is when you know where you are and what you're trying to achieve. Think about a word search, or a sudoku, or even a maze. The answer is right in front of you, you know exactly what you're trying to do. And the fun comes from solving the puzzle. Portal is a great example of puzzle gameplay perfected. You could always see your end destination and it was up to you and your Brainium to figure out how to get there. But the puzzles in this DLC weren't designed in ways that give you that satisfaction, they were designed to give you hemorrhoids. Instead of being at point A and trying to get to point B, you're at point A and don't even know where point B is or what it looks like. The perfect example is this monstrosity of a section where you gotta sneak past the janitor to get to the next room. Once you're in the next room, Mr. Noodle Arms is going to come and get you and you have no clue where the hell to go. I tried to get through a door at the end of the room a few too many times before I realized I needed to go up these hard to see stairs in the back instead. The game doesn't give you any clues or ideas that what you might be doing is wrong, and you don't have enough time to stand around and figure it out before an udon noodle grabs you. The result isn't a lack of feeling like you're failing to solve the puzzle, but a lack of understanding about what the puzzle is. That's enough about the gameplay for now, let's look at what the game teaches us. The mystery of Little Nightmares thickens in the hideaway, but we do get some insight into what the hell is happening on this death trap of a water vessel thingy. In case you've forgotten, this ship has a lot of untold mysteries. There's a prison for children with electrified bars on either side that is accompanied by a scary nursery and a cafeteria. When you finally get out of that part of the maw in the main game, you get the achievement, the prison, with the description, look how the canary has flown its cage. If that isn't defining proof you and all these other children are stuck in a prison, I don't know what is. I bring this up because this prison is important to the DLC story. When we were first playing Little Nightmares, we only had guesses as to why these children were being imprisoned. But now we have some solid, concrete answers with this third DLC. So let's dive into this update of the game, and I'll, I'll try not to ruin the experience with my opinion of how the DLC plays. First off, let's take a trip down memory lane in terms of Little Nightmares. The story thus far has revolved around a little girl named Six and a boy who is called the Runaway Kid. Just so I don't go tone deaf saying the Runaway Kid over and over, let's call him RK. Last time we hung out with this kid of poor hair design, he had been trapped by the blind inflatable tube man janitor. Our story continues with RK being ransacked into, uh, well, a, a sack, and hoisted onto one of those moving hooks we see in the main game. As the hook continues to move, it looks like RK's sack was either cut before he was put in, or he was able to cut it from the inside. Either way, he falls out of the bag and down to the ground on a pile of coal, where he is surrounded by curious gnomes. The gnomes 
Gnomes play a large part in this DLC, and induced the first known instance of Gnome Rage, an anger created by Gnomes being assholes and not helping you when you want them to. For you see, this DLC is the Gnome DLC. Every puzzle, every obstacle, everything you must do must be done with a gnome at your side. Don't have a gnome? Well golly, do I have a surprise for you! Just check any turned over drawer or filing cabinet and you're sure to find at least one gnome friend for all your gnomey needs! And, I don't know about you, but I named every gnome I worked with. There was Norman, Inky, and Blinky, Wilfred, and Mangu. Oh, and we can't forget about Ethel. It helps to give gnomes names so that when you're yelling at them it feels more real. Yes, I, I do have gnome anger issues now. Anyway, you get to this first door and help a gnome out who was a little too fat to fit through the crack in it. When you pick up a gnome, this weird omniscient music plays that makes you feel like you just did something super wrong. Like I, I have no clue what just happened underneath that slightly racist looking gnome hat, but Norman is all about following me around now. When you pick up your first gnome, the game gives you one of its very common displays of instruction, particularly how to throw an object. I guess the creators of Little Nightmares don't see gnomes as people, just objects. Not cool guys, gnomes are people too. Anywho, you work with Norman and find and free other gnomes and do that mystic voodoo to make them follow you. Eventually, the runaway kid ends up in what looks like a furnace room. This room, not that you'd have any way to tell, is essentially your hub for the game. You'll be coming back to this room a few times with gnome recruits that become your slave labor towards progression. You leave your gnomes to their coal work and progress forward. Sneaking by Mr. Noodle Arms, as we said earlier, you eventually arrive in this room. This room was another issue I had with the DLC. Everything we knew up to this point was that door with handles need to be opened by the handle. So I'm jumping, looking for a gnome friend to throw, I'm doing everything I can think of to figure out how to open these cabinets or climb up the shelves without the cabinets. And instead, all you have to do is grab the side of the cabinet to open it. Super easy. If the game had at any point had something like that before, what I knew about the game completely contradicted this room. And that's one of the reasons why I felt like the puzzles weren't up to par with the rest of the series. But I digress. You do a bunch of stuff, go on a mission to find some working fuses just to get to another one of my least favorite parts of the game, this room of torture. After freeing two gnomes that somehow figured out how to get themselves stuck in a filing cabinet, you need to bring them under your command. Easy, right? Mm, no, it's not. One of these assholes runs away from you in a circle around these boxes. Why? I don't know, but it's dumb. How does that make the game fun? I, I know I need him for the puzzle. Why does he have to be an asshole and run away from me? And I can't even corner him because he's running around in a goddamn circle. It was infuriating that I needed to deal with catching a runaway gnome I'd saved from a life of being filed away when I'm preoccupied figuring out the rest of this stuff. It was just... <clears throat> It, it, it was really, really annoying. Oh, and he's not the only gnome to run away from you. Another one does it in a pile of coal where you're even slower. Isn't that dandy? So you save them all, bring them back down to the furnace room, and they start chucking coal into the furnace too. Here's where the non-linear aspect of the game makes progression confusing. You assume that you're supposed to continue going to the right because, well, that, that's been the goal in every other part of the series, but there's nothing else to do that way. You actually have to go back a little and find a ladder in the furnace room that wasn't accessible to you when you first walked into the room. On top of that, whenever the ladder does drop, when you have enough gnomes doing coal work or whatever, it's not on screen if you're looking at the furnace. So there's no way to know that the ladder is now accessible unless you walk back and look at it. Then once you go up the ladder, the first entrance you're able to go into is actually where you're supposed to come out at the end of saving more gnomes. So that makes everything even more confusing and frustrating. Sorry, this DLC just wasn't designed well compared to the rest of the series. I can't stress that enough. Moving on, you jump through some more hoops to save some more gnomes, including the one that runs away from you in the coal pit. But, ugh, okay, so you end up in this room with a mining cart suspended in mid-air. There's a window you can walk through to get to the room on the left here. Now, that window isn't impossible to see, but trying to figure out the boxes behind it and what is and isn't climbable was goddamn impossible. I was actually trying to mess with my monitor settings just so I could see what I was trying to do without the flashlight, because, well, as soon as you hold onto something you can't use the flashlight and couldn't see anything. <sighs> you eventually finagle your way into that room, save more gnomes, and bring them back to the furnace room so you can beat the DLC. With that many gnomes putting coal into the furnace, the conveyor belt behind you begins to actually work, allowing you to rise up to the next level where you find the gnome's home, a small furnace room where they have pictures hanging up of children and some dolls. It's pretty creepy all in all. Past that room, you end up in an elevator with the geisha inside of it. Then the DLC ends. So what did this 
this DLC teach us? Well, it basically gave us no new information about Six or RK. What it did give us was some insight into the gnomes, where they come from and why they're here. In one of the earliest rooms, if you shine your flashlight on the back wall, there's a picture sketched out of children, an eye, and gnomes. According to this, the eyes that we see everywhere, or maybe even the geisha woman's gaze, can turn people into gnomes. Remember what I said gnomes are people too earlier? Y yeah, that was a setup for this part, right? Yeah. That's where the gnomes came from, and that's what the prison is for. It's essentially a future gnome prison. This is also backed up by the gnomes having drawn pictures of children in their home and children's toys. Now we should take into account that this DLC is called the hideaway. A hideaway generally refers to a place that's used as a retreat or hiding place, aka where the gnomes live. These are the gnomes that have survived. Think about what's happened to RK. He began in a sack being taken up to the kitchens. As we've seen from the main game with Six, those sacks stop there. Those children most likely are turned into gnomes and then eaten. But some gnomes have escaped, and they hide in that upper level furnace room for safety, probably scared out of their minds and only going out in search of food. Who knows, they may even have to move from place to place to make sure they aren't found. That would be very nomadic of them. Oh, I, I need to stop watching Game Theory. It's ruining my humor and turning me to puns. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll try better. What this DLC shows us is that the story isn't even close to over. RK's journey so far is only just the beginning, and we'll definitely see another update featuring him in the future. In all honesty, this update didn't advance the plot at all. All it did was fill in the plot holes about where the gnomes came from. However, we still don't know why these children are being turned into gnomes and then eaten, or why this insane geisha is running this crazy operation at all. Of course, we do have some theories, but we've already talked about them in this video and this video. And are they there? I don't know. So if you have any questions, I'd recommend checking those out. And if you're still confused and have some questions for us, I'd recommend checking out our Discord or our Patreon, where you can ask us questions and talk to us directly. That's all for me today, guys. This update was great for certain parts of the lore, but uh, as for the gameplay, um, I think I need to spend some time in the fetal position. So I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>